Hey you guys, and it's Ben and welcome back to episode 5 of your mini game bucket plugin tutorials. Today we're going to be just sorting out a couple of things uh, to do with when, you know, if the player uh, is in the game and they leave, then they'll be moved from teams uh, and stuff stuff like that. Um, and wh when, to, when to stop the game and just sort of stuff like that. So it's going to involve a lot of um, just sort of making some listener classes and and yeah. So, in our uh, listeners, we already have our player quit, and so we're going to add a couple of things into our into our player quit event. Um, so, first of all, we're just going to get our uh, the player that's quit quickly, or is going to quit. This is called just before they quit. So, player player equals event dot get player. So, we're going to get the player that's about to quit the game, and we're going to say if the game has started. So, if the game is in progress. Then we're going to say uh, team dot get team player and dot remove the player. So we're going to get the team uh, that the player is in and remove the player from that team, so that they're no longer in that team and that team doesn't have a player who isn't online uh, in in the list of that team anymore. So uh, I guess I'll okay. So that that's how. That's what all we're going to add into our player quit. So we're going to make a, a new listener now, and this one is player death. Uh, in our super class, we're going to take uh, mg listener like so, and we'll take the constructor from the super class. So we have our constructor set up, and now we just need to make a at event handler public void on on player death, and then player death event event. Like so. Now, first of all, again, we're going to get the player. So, player player equals event dot get entity. I think it is. Yep. Player event dot get entity for some strange reason. No idea why. And we're going to do that same thing here. So, team dot get team player dot uh, play team dot get team player dot remove player. Like so. Um, and so yeah, that's how that's how that's going to work. And at the same time, we want to uh, kick them from the game because they've just died. So. They're now they're now out, so we have to type player dot kick player for uh, chat color dot red, and you died. Simple as that. So they died. Uh, so that let's register that before we forget. So if we go into our the BC warfare class or whatever you called it, uh, and copy this down and call it player death, like so. We've just registered that new listener. Okay, so now we want our final one we're going to be creating today, and it's going to be in a new package actually. So if we hit new class, what we can do is we can just change this to listeners.entity. It's going to be an entity listener, and we're going to listen for entity damage by entity. So when one entity hits another entity, and in our superclass, we just type mg listener and construct is from superclass, and it'll add this into our thing automatically. Obviously, you can type this in manually, so you could type entity damage by entity and extends mg listener. And then public entity damage by entity, the BC warfare or whatever your plugin is called plugin, and then super plugin. So if we make a at event handler, and we type public void on entity damage by entity. If I could type entity and then entity damage by entity, it's so long by entity event event like so. So what we're going to type in here first of all is we're going to check if both people are players. So we, we're only gonna run this if both of the uh, people who are getting here are players. So we're going to say if, uh, and then put an exclamation mark and then two more brackets. So we're gonna invert everything inside of these brackets. So if event.getEntity is an instance of a uh, player and the damager, so event.getDamager is an instance of player, so what we're checking here is if both players are not, if both entities are not players. So we're saying if both of these are players, otherwise if they're not players, we're going to say event dot set cancelled true, and then just return out of here, return out of the um thing because we don't we don't want uh this. And actually, yeah. So if, if say if, that's if a, a monster is attacking something. Nothing is going to get hurt in this uh, at all because we're going to turn off mobs and stuff. Um, so we're just going to cancel that event. We're also going to check uh, if the game 
dot has started. Uh, so if the game has started, we can say event uh, dot set cancelled true, but we want to invert that. So if the game hasn't started, we're going to set it to uh, true. So they can't damage them uh, each other when the game when the game hasn't started. And now we're going to grab two objects. So we're going to say player player equals and then cast it to player because we know it's a player now. Uh, dot get entity and the same thing but for the damager. So damager and it's going to be instead of entity dot get damager like so. Read the necessary parentheses. Now we're going to check if the team dot get team. So if we get the team of the player, if the team of the player is equal to the team of the damager. So if basically if they're on the same team, then we can say event dot set event 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 dot set cancel true and then return because and we'd actually need the return because it's the last statement in the method. So we can remove these unnecessary brackets. So what that's doing is it's checking if they're in the same team and if they are in the same team. We're just going to say they can't do it, uh, basically. So we've been removing people from teams here. We've been saying remove from team. Uh, but how do we know when to actually stop the game? So if we go into our team class, which is in handlers team, and we say uh, remove, we have player teams dot remove and then player dot get name. Uh, we want to make a kind of active teams array and a private array for the players in a team. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a copy this all teams and just call it active teams like so and then copy it down again and change it to a private list and just put members like so. Right now when a player is added to the team as well as putting them in player teams we want to also put them into members so members dot add player dot get name and instead of having team in here we want a stream string like so and then in here we want string okay and in active teams uh, we want to put that when the team is registered so in here we're going to put uh, as well as all teams to add, we're going to say active teams dot add this team, like so. Now, when the player gets removed from the team, as well as removing them from the player teams, we want to remove them from members dot remove player dot get name, like so. And then we want to check uh, if that members list is empty to see if there are no more players in the team. So to do that, we're going to type if members if members dot is empty. So if members has no members, so if this team no longer has any members, then we want to say active team, active team, so all the active teams dot remove uh, this team because this team no longer has any members. However, um, we want to check if there are no more active teams. So if we say now, uh, if active, active teams uh, dot get size or yeah so size if active teams dot size is equal to one so if it only has one member left in it then we want to say uh, game dot stop because there's only one team left and we're gonna actually change this game dot stop method to put who the winning team is so team team uh, and in it we're just gonna put active teams dot get zero so get the uh, the last active team there and that's going to sort out how our game actually stops. So every time a player is removed from a team, it's going to check, uh, is that team empty? If so, remove the team. And we can actually broadcast a message here. So if we use our chat utilities and we say broadcast and let's say uh, get name, team has been disqualified. Or well, not disqualified, has been eradicated. There we go. And then remove them. So if we say that and then move them after just so it looks nicer um and then yeah so that's how you know that will work and that's going to work out quite nicely i believe if i haven't made any stupid mistakes which i guess we'll find out once we've actually finished it all and we end up uh playing it and debugging it a bit which may take up a couple of tutorials uh near to the end so i'm just going to put this into context for you so we create this new team blue and new team red 
and we when this gets added it gets added to active teams and all teams like so so the, what happens then is whenever players get added into it they get added into a, a members list which is only sort of visible by each specific team class so red and blue so say we said a team dot get team player and then we were in the red team that would say that would add them to the red team's members then if they die and they are removed from the team if they have a team we're going to remove them from our big team list where we actually get our teams from so this list just gets the teams uh, and then we're going to check and then we're going to remove them from their individual team so say they were in red team we'd say team dot get team player dot remove from the list and then it would remove them from members also now we're going to check if that members list so if that local members list has no more players in it that team has you know basically been destroyed and is dead so we're going to remove them from the team and say and that's no longer an active teams so now if the active team size is one so if there's only one team remaining we're going to stop the game and we're going to say that the winning team is the active teams dot get zero now this this is uh you know we don't have to actually modify this at all if we wanted to add more teams into our game like i said before we could say add a green team here we could add a green team and this would work exactly the same and there'd just be a new team like so so that is actually um how we're going to do that and i guess further into it i'm going to show you how to add these by config by configuration file so we don't actually have to do this at all it will all be uh, done via config and we won't have to code the teams um so yeah that's how we're gonna actually do that i guess next tutorial we're going to be getting into the uh more of the the stop method we're also going to tidy up our our countdown method we're going to put this into a bucket runnable which was <laughs> i don't know why i didn't think of it before Lots of angry people in comments happened in that episode. Uh, but yeah, we're going we're gonna to clean this up a little bit. Now we're going to make this a bit more efficient. Uh, and yeah, so I'll see you guys next time.